Okay, I'm uh, my name's Jody Cant. I'm currently the Chief Executive of Landgate from Western Australia, and I'm absolutely delighted to be here today to share our journey, which we're incredibly proud of as an organisation. So Landgate is a commercial statutory authority, and what that means is we have a commercial board, but we have one shareholder, and that's our minister. Uh, it's an interesting balancing act um, to get both your, your commercial board and your minister happy, but so far we've managed to do that. And we provide secure land titling services to underpin a property register and property rights, which is very important for the economy, um, valuation for taxation purposes, and also spatial and open data for government. So just to give you an idea of the size of us, um, we're the biggest legal jurisdiction in the world. So we claim we're bigger than Texas. Um, this map shows that our claims are, claims are correct. We're also one of the oldest land masses in the world and our indigenous uh, people, the Aboriginal people, go back, have 50,000 years of claims on our land. So our connection to land in WA is very deep and very ancient um, and very important. So today, while we're a business that looks ahead with contemporary ideas, um, looking to continually reform and reinvent who we are, we also have a very um, deep, deep connection to our land. So our heritage uh, stretches back to the beginning of the Swan River Colony. That's 1829. In 1829, the first Surveyor General um, Sep Septimus, John Septimus Rowe charted much of our coastline and at the time he was a real innovator himself. He was a naval man who brought naval survey techniques to the land and uh, at the time people thought he was a, a bit crazy. Um, perhaps we've kept the crazy going. Um, but we, we regularly claim that exploration is in our DNA. We were founded by the explorers of the state. It's a very big state. Um, and for us, the, the guardianship and the, of property ownership and conduct, um, being custodians of our loc location data is hugely important. So we're not your average public sector agency. Um, as explorers, we, we approach things with no boundaries. We, we say our motto is we know no bounds and uh, we're working on, on living that out. It's been really important for us to look at our rapidly evolving sector and embrace uh, digital disruption. So 200 years after Roe, um, what happened? 2007, in, in our world, two things happened. Uh, the first is the iPhone, um, where everybody became a property expert uh, and a data expert, um, and, and information was at fingertips. And it, it was no longer, you know, paper was no longer going to be the, the way of the world. For Landgate, we were also formed. So prior to that, we'd been a couple of separate um, government departments. We were formed into a commercial statutory authority, which allowed us to do things a bit differently. And, and while we had much of the restriction of government, we also had an ability to own shares in companies, start our own companies, and really take control of our own destiny, um, including keeping the funds that we made or a percentage of them. While we give a percentage back to government, we can also keep funds that we make. So we, we really knew that for us to take on the challenges that would be ahead, we, we needed our DNA, our explorer's DNA, but we also needed to change how we did business. Um, we needed to keep our customer focus as an agency, but we also need to take on the digital digital economy. So digital disruption. Our, our choice was, we, we felt, was to disrupt or be disrupted. Um, and given that choice, it's a pretty easy one to make. Um, we saw things happening around the world that was going to change everything about our industry. And that started as soon as mobile technology came along. So to maximise the value of our asset, we had to reinvent the way we worked both our technology, our engagement with our customers, uh, and our relationship with our shareholder. We knew uh, we were sitting on a valuable asset, and we knew it wouldn't be long before other people recognised the value of the asset and came knocking on the door with a big check. So where do we start? Our transformation absolutely started with our own people. 
it, it has to. I, I can't uh, overstate the importance enough of having your own people on board. We're a values-driven organisation. We take our values very seriously. Uh, we, it, all of our projects include reference to our values, um, which are there. Um, at Landgate, we make the decision based on creating value and being true to our values. So it's, it's been a really interesting journey and we start with our customers at the heart of everything we do. So what's our um, digital transformation look like? Our strategy and reform agenda had to be developed in parallel because you have to keep providing the business that you're there, there to do. We uh, could see that there are new opportunities in the sector. We knew the power and the value of the data that we collected. We had a strong commercial sensibility and that was both at the corporate executive level um, and at the board level. So our corporate executive was deliberately made up of people with commercial experience and government experience to give the balance going forwards. Our focus shifted to changes in thinking, in technology and as I said, our customer journey. So we've driven a really strong, bold cultural change program through our organisation and we've got a, a smaller um, but more empowered workforce. We're flexible, more agile. We've gone in the time that I've been at Landgate from about approximately 1,200 people to we're about 550 these days. We've done all of that so far voluntarily. Um, for every person that's exited our organisation, it's you know hundreds of hundreds of hours of um, talking and support and retraining if required. We've also brought in new skills. We've downsized um, and funded that ourselves. So at the same time, our customer service rate ratings have gone up. So why did we think we had to change? This is a model of the electronic marketplace. Um, it's a reference model we use based on work uh, by two gentlemen, Schmidt and Lindemann. I think they won a Nobel Prize in the late 90s for it. And this is a view of electronic markets. And in Australia, when e-conveyancing was introduced um, after many years of not going anywhere, in uh, 2012, 2013, e-conveyancing was introduced. And what we recognised that when you look at the property market, it was just ripe for disruption. So our own area of land registry is over here on the right-hand side. Um, but everywhere we looked, things were happening differently. On the left-hand side, you had things like auction.com and, and Zillow. Um, down in the financial area, you've got peer-to-peer -peer lending and blockchain. Um, so in the middle, which is where, where it says, the box that says PEXA, I'm not sure if you can see it, um, that was that, that's our electronic uh, conveyancing company that, that, um, that looks at electronic lodgement across Australia. So from, from Lango's perspective, we knew that we had to update our registration systems to work in this new environment. We did a global search. We have an IT, our IT policy says buy off the shelf first. We did a global search and couldn't find a product that we thought suited our needs. But what we did find was a market for, for just that product if we could develop it. So with our IT provider um, in partnership, we did a proof of concept funded by our innovation program and we ended up with a the world's first cloud-based multi-tenanted land registry. And what that means is that the land registry we've developed, we can use not only to do our own work, but we can provide land registry as a service for the first, first time to other users. Um, so it's very exciting for us. And uh, what it means for our customers is the, the land title transactions that used to take days now take seconds, a fully automated basic land transaction is down to 23 seconds untouched by human hand, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, and, and why? So our prediction of, of um, the big checks coming in and, um, and land registries uh, putting themselves up for sale, or maybe not themselves, but their ministers certainly putting them for sales, things were happening in Australia that were changing. So in the time since we've been looking at this, the New South Wales government has come to the market for a, a provider. Uh, we have South Australia in the market for a provider and Victoria have just announced a scoping study to look at what they might uh, do with their land registry. So we would argue what we predicted would happen and the dominoes are falling. So what was our response? As a commercial statutory authority, we can form companies. We spun off a, a company called Advara. 
Advara is 78% owned by Landgate and 22% owned by ADECO, which is the multinational parent company of our IT partner, Agilon. Um, this subsidiary company is, um, is able to work outside of the restrictions on a, placed on a government agency like Landgate, but obviously with 78% we have a controlling interest. Landgate then licensed the IP that we developed around our land registry to Advara to commercialise. So Advara is now the IT service provider for Landgate. Um, to coin a phrase, we eat our own dog food. Uh, so we developed a system and we were the first customer for Advara. Advara has just been successful as part of the concession in New South Wales and is the technology uh, consultant on the consortium that was successful against strong international competition for the work in New South Wales. So for a little company from Western Australia, that's pretty exciting for us and we're hoping that that's our second customer of, of many more. Um, the consortium, that, that consortium sort of gets the keys to the New South Wales office in a, probably around July this year. So that's going to be a really exciting journey for us to be on. And we're obviously looking now at, at um, what the other states are doing and what other Torrens jurisdictions around the world, of which there's um, approximately 40, all of them who we know through the search we did earlier need a new system. So if you need a new system, come and talk to me. Um, and Advara really exemplifies what Landgate's about and our value of innovate and achieve. So it, it was originally an idea put through our innovation program by a staff member. SPUR, on the other hand, is our location and innovation hub, and SPUR is all about tomorrow. So while we're trying to do things as um, be best of breed in the world today, we're absolutely looking at tomorrow. We formed SPUR a year ago to really help grow our own economy, uh, to provide government data to startups so that they could build businesses on the back of it. Um, and to chal continually challenge ourselves about how we do things. So SPUR is about using our knowledge, experience, connections and know-how to help others create businesses. And by that I mean if you, know, if you try and find a place in government, if you have a good startup idea and you try and find a government department and the data that will help you do it, you, know, you can be on an endless cycle of phone calls. But because we've worked in this space for so long, we can have one conversation and really help a startup get off the ground. So in our first year, we've got 847 open data sets available from other government agencies. For every one of those data sets, that's probably about 10, 15, 20 conversations with them to try and convince them that they should make their data available. We've um, had four startups, four new businesses launched. We've um, funded uh, nine um, grants. We had our first round of grants. We had 47 applicants, funded four of them. And it really is, for us, about creating that extra value for government. Um, we've also, last year, we've been running a formal innovation program, the first in government in, uh, in Australia since 2008. Last year, we were named at number 22 in Australia's most innovative companies list. So that's across all private, public and not-for-profit. We're incredibly proud of this number. We're a very small agency. Um, you know, with, with quite from the outside what can look like a fairly um, mundane brief. The only public agency that beat us was the CSIRO, which is Australia's big scientific research, very well funded. Um, to give you an idea, they're the guys that invented Wi-Fi. So I'm actually totally happy to be number 22 just behind the Wi-Fi inventors. Um, and for us, this, this is hugely important for our staff and, and for the recognition that um, that all of us should have because it takes all of us to innovate and we've, we've absolutely encouraged our staff. We allow our staff 5% of their time to work on an innovation of any kind. It doesn't have to be business related um, and it's, um, it's really paying off for us. So of course back to our customers and community, we've been relentless about our focus on value, creating value for our, our masters. Um, we've generated uh, $52 million worth of savings um, in IT just in the next five years. Uh, we've gone from 900, uh, over 900 to under 600 staff. We've delivered $104 million in profit back to government in 10 years. Um, 
We're also shareholders in PEXA, the electronic conveyancing company. Our shareholding has approximately doubled. We invested about $35 million. It's now conservatively valued at about $70 million. And Advara, um, you know, is just beginning. And we really pitch ourselves as a value adder and a value creator for government. And it's hugely important to us because this allows us to write our own destiny and not wait for people to come and tell us what to do. What to do. I'd have to say that while um, we saw the opportunity and saw what was coming and, and have responded to it, no one has ever told us we need to do th these things. However, now that we're doing them, everyone's saying what a good uh, idea it was that we did. So. Um, I should also add that these numbers were right through the middle of the global financial crisis, so uh, pretty successful. And obviously, with the decision out, out of New South Wales, you know, we hope the world's at Barra's oyster. So dollars one are one thing; satisfied customers are another. So these are our stats, our customer stats, which we're very proud of. Um, our turnaround times are, are down significantly. Our um, backlogs are down significantly, and our customer set. Um, is uh, increasing and remains very high. So we've become more efficient, more focused on delivering what our customers actually want um, and more technically capable to meet their expectations. So the future for us, um, we, we believe this is just the beginning. We've been sharing our knowledge and internationally for over 25 years we've worked both in country and we, we host a lot of fellowships. Um, if you have a group of people in your country that would like to come and spend some time in, in Western Australia, please uh, come and talk to me. We've worked with um, countries as diverse as Vietnam, Fiji, Indonesia, China, Bhutan, Nepal, Africa. Um, so, and that's across all of the things around um, registering and securing property rights for economic development. So if I can leave you with, uh, I guess, three takeaways on our journey, your people and your customers must be at the heart of everything you do. You cannot do any of these changes with technology alone. Um, you can't communicate enough. You need to communicate and communicate and communicate. And when you think you've done enough communicating, you probably need to start communicating. Uh, it, is, it is hugely important. Um, and the other thing is you, you need to be resilient you need to be prepared to fail. Um, and as we're discovering, you also need to be prepared to succeed. Thanks very much.